What's going on everybody? This is Jeff with Living in Arizona and today we're going to make a video about staying cool in Arizona. So with summer creeping up on us, we've already hit about 100 degrees. So today's supposed to be 100 and something uh, out here in Phoenix. So uh, we're definitely getting into the hot part of the year. And, uh, you know, with all this stuff that's going on outside of uh, the regular heat, you know, you want to know how to stay cool. And uh, that's what this video is going to be all about. So if you guys want uh, in the comments or in the description below is going to be a link to some of the things that I uh, personally wear. You can either get ideas to see exactly what I'm talking about or you can buy the exact same thing that I personally use uh, based on my experience uh, having lived here. So uh, it's mostly tailored to men, but the same kind of idea applies to women. Just you would get the female version of what it is. Um, so also, uh, for those of you who are thinking about moving to Arizona and you want to talk to a real estate agent, in the description is going to be a link to my brother who uh, actually you can message him or fill out a link and see, you know, get the ball rolling and get the discussion started about uh, moving to Arizona if you're looking to buy. Okay, so um, some of the things that you're going to want to do on your house to keep cool in the summer months, which is really important, right? Uh, you know, your home, that's where you're going to be. If you're on home quarantine, I mean, you're going to want to make sure your house is up to snub and on par with what you need. Thanks to the six people who crushed up the likes, by the way. And I see your guys' comments. We are going to uh, answer questions at the end of the video. So uh, one of the things that I really recommend is sunscreens on your windows. So those black sunscreens that are all around people's houses, yeah, it costs about $150 to do each window. But that alone is going to retain a lot of the heat because your windows can radiate a lot of heat. And uh, the second thing that I'm going to recommend is going to be insulation. But you know how they usually roll out insulation? It's that pink fiberglass kind of insulation. What they now do is they do fiberglass insulation. Uh, here in this new build that's at my house, they, uh, they, don't do, um, they didn't do my garage. So I'm probably going to end up having to do my garage's roof. And then I'm going to have to figure out a way to uh, try and do the side window and then just kind of do a little bit better job of keeping the air inside of my garage. By the way, guys, I have been uh, fixing up my house, uh, being that I've been around uh, my house a lot more lately under home quarantine. So I am coming up with ideas of things that you can do around the house to make your home a lot more livable. So I, I will be doing more of those videos uh, showing you guys around my man cave, which is my garage, showing you guys around my... Uh, my home office, which is right here, showing you some of the things that I do to stay uh, organized. And then also, you guys have seen my garden, but then uh, some of the things that I do in my bedroom and whatnot, just some ideas of things that you can do out here in Arizona that work out. Some you might like, some you might hate, some you might say that's crazy, some you might say that's awesome. And then so you have insulation. Another thing is keeping your doors closed. Sometimes you, you know, if someone just leaves the, the back door open, they'll be letting in a lot of heat. I mean, that alone can pump in tons of heat, right? Uh, the spray foam insulation, like Andy just said, is really a good idea. That's absolutely correct. Uh, yesterday, I will say, uh, I had a huge lizard uh, in my backyard. Uh, you guys always ask, do you guys get any reptiles or whatever? But, you know, that's another reason to keep your door closed because uh, this lizard was this big. It was a spiny lizard. Anyways, you guys can see that in the group uh, living in Arizona on Facebook. I posted a couple pictures and on our Instagram living in Arizona uh, now. And then so uh, another thing that you're going to want to do is make sure your air ducts and everything in your house is, is you know, clean. <laughs> make sure your air filters are clean because if those aren't clean, your air conditioning unit's not going to be working. And if you're worried about your air conditioner, you know, this is the time of year to be look, calling the air conditioning guy out there and saying, hey, is my air conditioning up to snub? Can you make sure everything's good to go? Because you want to make sure when it comes down to 105, 110 degrees, 115 degrees in Phoenix, your air conditioner is top flight and you're not calling up everyone saying, hey, uh, look, my air conditioner is out right in the middle of the heat of the summer. You don't want your air conditioner down for two to three days. So one of the things that people do is they make sure their air conditioned ducts and their air filters are all clean heading into June and even May, really. Uh, so what out in my backyard, you guys have seen my backyard. What I want is I want shade trees. Thanks to the 12 people who already crushed up the likes, by the way. I know it's a little early to be doing a live feed. Um, shade trees in the backyard. Those are really important. All you need is about two or three really big trees and those will really cool your backyard. And that also those shade trees can protect, you know, your, your home from just getting direct sunlight because that direct sunlight radiates right onto your home. 
So, uh, you know, that just any protection of insulation you can get to keep your home cooler is a really good thing. All right. So uh, if you don't, if you can't get, if you don't have time to wait for shade trees because you bought a brand new house like this and you need shade like instantly, building a pergola. People build these shade pergolas. And then what you can do with that is have vines grow up it. Like there's a couple different vines I have in my backyard. You guys saw great vines grow good out here. Lilikoi, which is a passion fruit vine. And then there's uh, the snail vine, which grows really good. And I've seen a creeping fig. So creeping fig, that's a funny name, right? But that's a good vine too. I can make a video specific to all types of different things. It just depends on what you guys want me to really highlight and focus on. But uh, this came actually because someone in the group on uh, Facebook living in Arizona said, hey, Jeff, can you make a video about how to stay cool and living in Arizona? And you guys know I grew up here and I have walked around the desert barefoot. And uh, in the summertime, walking outside, it is hot on the feet, not just on the rocks, but on the um, concrete and the, and the um, asphalt. So uh, when it comes to uh, the clothes that I personally wear, I always wear dry fit. You'll see in the description below there, I have a link to some of the dry fit clothing that I like. The reason I like dry fit instead of cotton or polyester is because it's, it's, it's a very lightweight, but it's durable too. Like cotton shrinks and this and that. These dry fits, I mean, I've had this shirt for over a year and it's still in great shape and it's really comfortable. So that's why I wear dry fit. This is a quick silver for the ones in the comments or Nike. I, that's why if you look at my videos, I typically am wearing a Nike shirt because they actually make pretty good dry fit clothes. Another thing, which I do have a link to this, is an Oakley hat. The reason I like these hats, you can see they have, they're trucker hats. They have holes in the back here. So, uh, you know, when you're wearing a hat, um, it's kind of dirty because I wear it a lot and I'm gardening, but you can see those little holes right there. They, they create um, an aeration, so it's, it's pretty good. And another thing that a lot of people in Arizona do is when it's really hot, they'll just drench this. They'll just pour, they'll put the hose under this, and then they'll put it over their head. And that's another way to really do it. Now, another thing that's really important why you want to wear hats in Arizona is because the sun is so dang bright. You guys are always saying, Jeff, you look sunburned. Well, yeah, I go outside a lot. Okay, but to, <laughs> to not get too sunburned, you actually, you'll see a lot of guys on construction sites. Again, a link to this is down below. It's only 14 bucks, and it's like, it's basically like a full-on mask. Now, you kind of look like a, a robber, but, but um, you know, this right here, when you're outside in the garden and you're working for, you know, you're doing yard work, this right here is pretty good. You look a little scary, you look a little, <laughs> you know, you almost look like you belong in Saudi Arabia or Iran or something. But, uh, you know, you get the idea. This thing here is going to, it's UV protectant, 14 bucks. It's also got the mask, so you can wear it at Walmart. You can go like this. You know, people do this. So it's got multiple uses, and these are really good. That's why most construction workers, if you ever go see the, the, the crew out there building the roads or building the homes, they're wearing these. Okay, it's like a ski mask. It also works in the winter. Um, another, if, if you go skiing, this right here, this little gardener hat, full brim protection. It's a safari hat. Now, it's not the coolest looking, most flashy thing, but when you're in the garden, again, it's got this, what I like, this aeration at the top to keep it cool. You know, so that's what I like. Some of you guys might like full brim uh, or full, full cloth. It just depends on what you like. But again, that's all those links are in the comments or in the description. This right here, this is oh, this is my favorite brand of sunglasses. They're called Spy, okay? And I get these Helos right here. And the reason I like it, it's a, it's a black matte. It's not shiny, but if you drop it, it won't crack. Because I got a pair of sunglasses and I dropped it on my tile floor and this right here cracked and I had to super glue it with some Gorilla Glue. And I was like, I don't want that to happen. So this, this, this material right here, it's polarized lenses, but it's also like a rubbery kind of, uh, you ever play golf? It's like those Bellata golf balls where it's kind of like rubbery, but it's really hard rubber. So I like these glasses. That's why I get these all the time, spies. When it comes to sunscreen, you know, you can do the spray stuff. The reason I don't like the spray stuff is because, you know, you got to like make sure it doesn't get into your respiratory, your mouth and your nose. So I use this stick stuff. This stuff's real easy. I don't, I also don't like that, uh, that lotion where you got to, you know, <laughs> put it on your hands and go like this. I hate wearing sunscreen. I really freaking hate it. But in Arizona, it's so damn hot, I'm telling you. So again, a link to this uh, copper tone. It's only like $7.99. You can even get it at Walmart for like, I think like $4.99. I don't know exactly how much it is, but if you want it right now and you want to have it at your house, this copper tone stick, the link is below. I think it's a little bit more expensive on Amazon. I don't know. Some things are more expensive on Amazon and some are uh, not so expensive. So 
Uh, some other things that uh, people do out here to stay cool in the summer is they build a pool. I have a jacuzzi um, because I don't really like really cold water, so I like to be able to heat it up. But still, if I'm if, if it's in the summertime, I just don't turn on the heat and I get in there and it's like, you know, maybe 70 degrees, 75 degrees water. It's still a, a, a place to take a dip and cool off. I just don't. It, it's, it can function as a small pool. Right. So. But if I want it at night to, to heat up and be nice and warm, it also works. But there's this thing called a cocktail pool. Uh, I think cocktail pools are pretty good. They're called spools, S-P-O-O-L, small pool. You can you can use it. You can heat it and turn on jets and everything because it's not a big body of water, but it's big enough to actually like, you know, kind of swim around in. So those are pretty good if you guys want to build one of those or if you want a house with a small pool. Or you can get the full size pool with the diving board and the 10 foot deep end and all that jazz, right? Uh, again, the the stuff that you're gonna, the stuff that I just showed you that for walking around, these these uh, sandals right here, I like these. The reason I like these is because I can I can walk on lava rock, I can walk on hard rock, and my sandals won't break. So you, you, I don't know if you guys have ever had a blowout. I used to live in Hawaii for a couple of years, and you'd walk over lava fields, and that rock is really jagged and rough. I could walk with Ula Kais. Those are Ula Kais. For those of you who know what an Ula Kai is, uh, those are really strong Hawaiian-made uh, beach sandals. But I use them out here in Arizona, and they work really good because I can hike in them, and I don't get a blowout. You get a $24 pair of uh, Ross uh, Quicksilver um, chonklas, as they call them, or flip-flops or slippers, whatever you want to call them. You're going to have a blowout out there, and then you got to like <laughs> hop back to your car because you're going to get stickers and stuff in there. That's another thing. Stickers don't penetrate this. So these, yeah, they're 85 bucks. You'll see them. I got the link in the description below. Yeah, they're a little bit expensive, but you're going to have them for a while and they're actually strong. And you can wear them. But why would you want to wear flip flops in the desert in the summertime? I don't know, because you don't want your feet to sweat. <laughs> so again, quality does matter, but a lot of people wear flip flops. Uh, it, your feet, you know, you might have to get used to wearing them. You might like the first couple times I get a new pair, you know, in between where the sandal is that where, where, where it holds onto your foot you know it gets a little raw but after some time maybe a week or two it goes away and then you're in the game and then you got them for the next year at least i mean she's i actually like them so much when i first moved here i got my sister a pair i got my business partner a pair i, I mean that's how much i like them i got my brother a pair that's how much i stand by the ulukai brand for flip-flops but you can go to ross and walmart and get flip-flops for sure but again Worst thing, worst case scenario is you're out hiking around or out in the desert, out of, at the river or at the lake, and you get a blowout, and then you got to one hop back to the car because you're going to be dealing with stickers, you know, from the cactus. You're going to be dealing with uh, hot ground, you know. So it's better to just have a real strong pair that you know is going to last, built to last, right? And that's that Ulakai. The link is in the in the description, or you can go to their website, or you can just shop around on Amazon. But the ones that I put in there are the ones that I actually uh, wear. Uh, so again, staying cool in the summer, going to the river, going to the lake, going up north. So to the pine country, going up to, uh, you know, Pine Top Lakeside, Flagstaff, Sedona, Oak Creek Canyon. Camping up there is a good way. I mean, hey, what better way to quarantine and get out of town and get out of the heat than to go out of town for about a week and just camp at one of those campsites? Well, I don't know. Maybe they're closed. <laughs> we'll see. I don't know about that. But um, some of these places people go anyway. I mean, do what you want, but uh, who knows? <laughs> we'll see. I mean, this is the weirdest time ever uh, with this quarantine. Anyways, I see you guys dropping some uh, uh, comments. Dark Barton says, "Any recommendations for insulation companies?" Um, I, I mean, I just, I just hire like, a, 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 I just ask like my handyman, and he, he sent out two guys, and they gave me a quote six hundred bucks to do my garage with that foam insulation. I haven't done it yet, but I probably should. But the thing is with the garage, you know, the, the the side wall that connects to the house, the two sides that connect to the house, that's insulated. But then the, the side wall where the garage is, that's not insulated. The garage door is not insulated and the roof isn't insulated. So I'm like, well, if I get that roof insulated, now I have to solve the problem of figuring out how to keep the heat out of my uh, where the garage door is. So I have to figure out if that's going to be worth it. And I think it might be. But also the side wall is still going to radiate in heat. I mean... But, you know, putting some of that uh, putting some of that rubber uh, sealant stuff at the top, I might have to do anywhere there's a, anywhere there's air coming in. Remember, leaving doors open just lets in tons of heat. Uh, 
Another thing that's really cool, uh, I should have probably put a link to these, but having a lot of ice on hand, I mean, just ice water, ice water, ice water. When you're out there, you're going to want cold jugs of water. And, uh, you know, you'll see the guys on the job site. Nothing better than a hot day in Arizona and showing up to that water jug and just going. <laughs> I mean, that's just getting some fresh ice cold water when you've been working outside. It's just so refreshing. Uh, and I don't even really typically drink ice water. But when it's 110 degrees out, you better... Get ready. Ice water. Um, so that's that. That's a lot of stuff. So having a sprinkler system, you know, the kids, they want to go to the park and they want to play on those uh, those slip and slide things where the, the water fountains, I think you can get those on Amazon and whatnot. Uh, you can get them at Target, you can get them at Costco, wherever you want to get that. And then uh, so uh, someone just said Kim Jong-un died from North Korea. I don't know. Did he? I, I thought he was uh, in a vegetative state. Did he really die? I don't know. Um, ghost protocol, love all your content, Jeff, huge fan. Uh, see you in three years. I hope. Yeah. I mean, if you're coming out in three years, Arizona, uh, it will probably be a lot further along. And as I've said before, they're still building like crazy out here. James Davis says, yes, the best pizza. Are you talking about Barrow's pizza in Casa Grande? So Barrow's pizza is one of the best, uh, pizzas out here in Arizona. So when you come out here, check up Barrow's. B-A-R-R-O-S, if you're a pizza guy. Uh, another pizza that's pretty good is Brooklyn V's. I've been I've been ordering some Brooklyn V pizza, and that's pretty damn good, <laughs> straight up. Uh, Tonio Espinoza says, I'm an active duty Marine in North Carolina from Gilbert, Arizona. Love watching your channel, brother. Can't wait to come home. Yeah, well, hey, I mean, are you guys, what have they got you guys doing in active duty? If you're active duty and you're on base, what are you guys doing? You know, do they got you... Uh, <laughs> the social distancing too. I mean, I know on the USS Roosevelt, uh, Teddy Roosevelt aircraft carrier, I think it's CBN 71 as a station in Guam, they had an outbreak and, uh, they had to relieve the, uh, commander. And, uh, but you know, I don't know. I was surprised to hear the military's active duty isn't quarantined yet, but then again, they can't stand down because if they stood down, then, uh, they're vulnerable. Right. So that's, I was curious about that. I talked to my buddies who are still in the active duty and they were saying, they were still at work, but they had some limitations, you know. Um, Ghost Protocol, trying to get rid of all three car payments, then buy small in Arizona, then sell off house in Washington, take the money and upgrade to nicer house in Arizona. Nice. Chuck Miller says, if you camp in California right now, they will throw you in jail, even if you are by yourself. Dang. Yeah, so, uh, so some of the states, some of the states, from what I've understood, have been uh, doing checkpoints and really strict protocols, making sure people are wearing gas mat or the mask and the ventilators and all, or whatever these things are. They haven't, I have not seen that yet in Phoenix, Arizona. I did see an interesting article this morning that you guys may or may not be interested in. It was in Sweden. They said that uh, because they didn't lock down the country, thanks to the 34 people who crushed up the likes, we now have 65 people watching. So thanks to everyone who did that. And, uh, they were saying that Sweden has um, is weeks away from what is called a herd immunity. Herd immunity is where um, they, they so they kind of let the virus and, 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 and the flu kind of get into society. And then the human genome creates antibodies throughout the herd, throughout the community, throughout the, the population. So instead of uh, doing what you know was recommended by a lot of the uh, doctors, which is shut down the communities, shut down everything, uh, Sweden decided to go against the grain and just kind of stay open for business. And uh, because they did that, um, their population was able to get what's called herd immunity. You can look it up, Sweden, herd immunity in Stockholm. And uh, so it was an interesting uh, decision those scientists and doctors in Sweden made. But in doing so, they actually achieved an antibody that was able to like a... An, an, like a natural immunity. So this is something, this is nature's way of uh, protecting populations like that. So that was interesting, I thought. Um, so Chuck Miller says, I'm not going to read that. <laughs> okay. Uh, Aventera says, Pizzeria Bianco is a great local pizzeria. Yes. Daniel Sill, antibodies for coronavirus only last six months, my man. Yeah, I mean, we don't know. Uh, has coronavirus been around six months to know if it's going to last for six months though? I don't know. Michelle, I guess by next week we'll see what Governor Ducey does here in Arizona. Yeah, I mean, isn't the opening date May 1? That's going to be an interesting uh, moment. I know that I'm really annoyed with and, and, and 
bored with that. I think that if if you're really scared of getting sick and you're and you're concerned about getting sick, you should probably stay at home. But if the if people uh, if people are confident in their immune systems and they feel comfortable with going out, they should be. I think it's getting to the point where they should allow they should be allowed to have exercise their own free will and their own freedom to uh, you know go about their daily life. Uh, but uh, you know we're living in a, a time where the government's deciding to tell people what to do. And people are deeply concerned about that because that's opening the door. It's like a domino effect. You, you take, you lose some rights to go out and then you get more, and then they start begging for more and more government authoritarianism and totalitarianism and dictatorships where it's like, you're just kind of told what they're said, stay home, stay home or get arrested. And you're like, well, where did my freedom to, to go about my daily life and do what I feel as long as I'm not breaking any laws, but apparently there's new laws that say, stay home. <laughs> So it's the law, stay home. I don't know. It, it just depends on how you feel about it. But a lot of people are really concerned that they're losing their rights uh, over that. Um, so let's see here. James Davis, who, who's from where? Sierra Vista, Arizona. Every, James wants to know where's everyone watching from. So if you're watching the video, drop a comment and let us know where you're tuning in from and we'll give you guys a shout out. But uh, we've got um, Stacy Stevens saying, average Arizona bill in hot months in Arizona. Well, if you have an energy efficient home, you have proper insulation, you keep the lights off because these computers, you leave the computer and any lights on in your house, that's radiating heat. So you're going to want to get uh, lights and uh, things that just don't radiate a lot of heat. Okay. So people are starting to drop their location. So Aventera is from Mesa. De Denise is from Glendale. Steven is from Tucson. JFB is watching from Paris. John Tier from Payson. Uh, Vince from Manhattan Beach, that's California. Uh, Mr. Loco is watching from Lahaina, Hawaii. Uh, Andy is watching from Tucson. Mary from Casa Grande. Deanne from Simi Valley. Sean from Atlanta. Evan from Minneapolis. <coughs> Robert from Anthem. Tyler from Louisiana. Hector from Minnesota. And Rennie from Gilbert. Monica is watching from Washington. So we've got a lot of people from Arizona watching. We've got a lot of people from uh, all around working are watching uh, Nashville. Sorry, I, I, I can't keep rattling them off like this, but uh, Kiev, Ukraine, uh, Petaluma. Anyway, uh, I'll keep giving you guys shout outs. Uh, but yeah, so that's pretty cool that everyone's watching from all over. But that's the, that's what's going on. If, you, if you're just now tuning into the channel, you can uh, go back and watch from the beginning. Like I said, I posted links to the gear that I wear, everything from these hats for gardening, to ultraviolet um, protection face masks for your whole head and body, staying cool with hats in Arizona. Welcome to the club. <laughs> Sunglasses. All these links are in the com or description below. Sunscreen, but the stick sunscreen. Uh, flip flops. The flip flops I wear. The ulakais. The ones that don't break down. The ones that aren't going to give you a blowout and get stickers in your foot and get stickers and thorns through your feet. And also, if you guys have any recommendations for channel. Uh, for videos, I know some of the, the videos that I have coming up uh, that you guys are going to probably want to watch is the places to go around Arizona, um, just the recreational destinations. So stay tuned for that one where I'm going to talk about off the beaten path stuff like the Bumblebee, the Bee Line, Monument Valley, Canyon de Chez, um, Fossil Creek, all those places that are really interesting places, Patagonia, Chiricahua, Tonto, all those places, Seven Springs. I'm going to make a video and I'm going to talk about that in that video. And if you guys have any other recommendations for videos that you guys want. Yesterday, I made a video about foraging food. So in Arizona, if they call it uh, SHTF, SHIT hits the fan, right? When If that ever happened, how can you survive in Arizona, right? And so a uh, survival guide to living in Arizona. Well, one of the things is foraging food. Did you know that there's food that grows naturally out here in the desert? And that's what that video was about. And that was only the vet, that was only the fruit and uh, veggies that grow out here. I didn't talk about the, the, the food, the animals that you can eat for some of you carnivores out there. But um, if you missed that video, you can go back and watch it. It's about foraging in Arizona, everything from eating prickly pear cactus to saguaro cactus fruit, to barrel cactus fruit, which is kind of iffy, on down the, the, the line to jojoba beans, the little jojoba plant beans that you can get off the trees. And there's a lot of different trees that you can eat and stuff out here in Arizona. 
So Scott Glick's watching from Queen Creek. In case you're wondering why I was reading off all those names, people were dropping their uh, location in the comments. Um, yeah, it, yeah. So the the off the beaten path uh, things to do in Arizona is coming up. Stacy says she would love that video. And if you guys missed that video on foraging in Arizona, go ahead and check it out. Thanks to the 46 people who crushed up the likes. Uh, UK Halloween Jack. Chuck Miller, prickly lettuce everywhere right now. It's sometimes called milkweed. It has mild thorns under the center of leaves. Looks like a long oak leaf. Tom A is watching from Santan Valley. Uh, Sean says, hey, Jeff, off topic, but is Metro Phoenix a saturated place for dentists? Like, is there a dentist on every street corner graduating school and looking to relocate to Tempe possibly? Well, as I've told everyone on the fringes of society, if you're one of those people who don't want to compete with um, with with the established uh, businesses, go to the outskirts of boom towns like Santan Valley, Queen Creek, uh, North Phoenix, Happy Valley, uh, Anthem, and, and uh, West Phoenix by Verado and Buckeye, or Northwest Phoenix where you got um, Peoria and and those areas up there, Vistancia, North Scottsdale. Go into those areas. North Scottsdale is kind of competitive, by the way. I don't know if that one's going to be as easy, but there's a big money up there. But um, you know, you go into these established communities, you, you get pick of the, you get run of the mill. I mean, you get first dibs. Uh, for example, moving into my new community here in uh, Santan Valley, I mean, we watched this community just grow out of the desert, and everyone's from somewhere else. They're all new, so that includes new businesses, new um, new opportunities, new neighbors. Everyone's really friendly. They're all looking to meet people. Um, that's been my experience out here in uh, Southeast Phoenix, you know, Queen Creek, Gilbert, uh, uh, Queen Creek, Gilbert, Santan Valley. Very friendly people out here. OK, real friendly. It's easy to get to know your neighbors and it's easy to just be peaceful. You're not just going to feel like, oh, my gosh, this is a bunch of cranky Hanks out here. You don't get that out here in Southeast Phoenix. You don't really get that anywhere in Phoenix, but I would say they're extra nice out here in the Southeast Phoenix. So if you're not one of those extra nice people. I get it. You know, not every day is a good day and some days you don't want to see people. But if you're, for the most part, a holly jolly, happy person, come on out to Southeast Phoenix. If you're a cranky Hank and you just don't like people and you're like, you want to kill people or you got this attitude. Bye. <laughs> we, we like we like the we like it out here where people are friendly and they, they work together and they're like, you know, it's like my neighbor. He can, you can call up your neighbors and be like, hey, I got to move this rock into the backyard. Are you available tonight at seven o'clock? People will show up. Your neighbors will show up and help you. Hey, this weekend we're having a kick, like they're having kickball at the park. They'll invite you. Uh, hey, we're having a pool party at the house. You're welcome to stop by. Hey, I'm cooking. I'm cooking. Uh, I'm cooking chicken bratwurst tonight. Do you want one or whatever? You know, I don't know. I don't know what chicken bratwurst. That's not really even a thing. Um, Michelle says friendly up here too. Everybody waves. Michelle's up in Anthem. Anthem's another one of those places that's uh, really friendly and act actually. Anthem in North Phoenix is pretty nice because it's it's higher desert. So you're higher in elevation. You know, you start at, at Anthem, you're still in the desert, but it, it's a little bit cooler than downtown Phoenix in the valleys. So you'll notice Anthem's five to 10 degrees cooler in the summer than um, downtown Phoenix. And even uh, if you start to go up Anthem a little bit further, you're right there. You know, you're not too far away from the high country. You know, you start heading up that that rim there. Uh, well, not the rim, but you start heading up in elevation and you get up into like Camp Verde, Cottonwood, uh, Prescott, and you got the Bradshaws off to the left and you got Bloody Basin to the right. <laughs> the name Bloody Basin, everyone's like, oh, I don't really want to go to Bloody Basin. That that name just doesn't really uh, sound too friendly to me. Actually, Bloody Basin is not very a pleasant place. It's 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 interesting looking, but uh, I mean, one of the reasons I don't like going to Bloody Basin is because there's a lot of mosquitoes. But why to get the name Bloody Basin? Well, I don't know. Why do they call Skull Mesa Skull Mesa? I don't know. <laughs> I actually know someone who found an old uh, musket rifle up there in uh, Skull Mesa. In case you're wondering where Skull Mesa is, if you go all the way north to this town called Cave Creek in North Phoenix, right? You go to Cave Creek, you run up to these mountains. They have uh, the, the big mountain that you see. You have Black Mountain, which is an old extinct volcano. You go beyond that, you have this big mountain back there called uh, Elephant Butte. To the right is Skull Mesa. But that's where Cave Creek is. But once you start climbing up those mountains up there, you're in uh, you're basically up on the, the next plateau. And, uh, you know, it's high desert up there. It's really beautiful. Million dollar homes out there in North Cave Creek, Carefree area. 
Uh, Vince says, any ski resorts in Arizona? Yeah, there's ski resorts. There's the tallest mountain in Arizona is called uh, Mount Humphreys or San Francisco Peak. It's next to Flagstaff. If you're ever driving from, say, Payson to Sedona on that little highway right there, you'll see this big, giant, towering mountain. It kind of It's kind of like Mount Hood, kind of like Mount Whitney, kind of like... Uh, what, uh, what's that one, Mount Rainier? It's got that It's got that kind of presence. It's a huge mountain. So I think it's like 12,000 feet. Don't quote me on that. I think San Francisco Peak is 12,000 feet. But anyway, at the very top of San Francisco Peak is a ski resort. Not a resort, but a ski, um, a place where people ski. It's called Snowball. And then you have Sunrise out in the White Mountains, which is over in eastern Arizona. And then at the top of Mount Lemon, you have a small uh, ski lodge kind of area. So, yeah, we have them. Uh, people, you know, if you're feeling real uh, interesting, people go to California and they go to Big Bear. Michelle says Cave Creek is cool. Cave Creek is cool. I grew up in Cave Creek. Um, yeah, Cave Creek. <laughs> Cave Creek has come a long ways. But uh, if you ever go up to Cave Creek, it's kind of like a cowboy town, kind of like a biker town. Uh, they got like a Buffalo Chip, Harold's. Uh, I used to work at that Mexican restaurant called El Encanto. It's this really nice restaurant. If you're ever up in Cave Creek, you like Mexican food, go to El Encanto. The, the, the founder of it died, passed away, Bill. He passed away, I think, like 10 years ago. But uh, I think it's still in pretty good shape. I haven't been there since I worked there probably uh, 20 years ago, thereabouts. Yeah, no, 15, 15, 20 years. I haven't been to El Encanto for 15 years. But 15 years ago, El Encanto, in case you're wondering what uh, El Encanto means in Spanish, the Enchanted. And it, it is enchanted because they had like a duck pond. So you'd eat, you know, and there would be like fountaining into the duck pond and all that. And it's pretty nice. Chuck Miller says, is horny toad still there? I don't think the horny toad's still there. In case you're wondering what a horny toad is, it's a little lizard. <laughs> it's it's not, but it, they, they played on it, right? It's like, hey, you want to go to the horny toad? It's like got multiple different potential meanings. But a horny toad is actually like a horned lizard. But um, I don't think the horny toad's there. I don't think the satisfied frog is there. But I think front town, frontier town's still there. Actually, I haven't been to Cave Creek for a hot minute, but uh, I know it's grown a lot. Um, my dad still still lives up there, but I haven't really been up to. This. I well, he doesn't live up there. He works up there. He lives now out in Sun City. Um, but you know, my whole family goes way back in Cave Creek because uh, my grandpa built a house back there in like the '60s. Um, and both my grandparents built houses out there, one in Morningstar and one out in um, Spur Cross. Uh, Brian says, wife wants to open a hair salon. Is Goodyear a place to upstart? I think so. I mean, it, it, a lot of this is going to be dependent upon COVID-19. <laughs> you guys saw that one video with that uh, pastor. He's like, I think his name's, uh, what's his name? Uh, man, that guy, I forgot his name, but he goes, COVID-19, and he was all, Kenneth Copeland, you guys got to Google that, Google, Kenneth Copeland, COVID-19, he's like, he like spits into the air, and he like says, <laughs> I was just, it, it was like a meme on the internet, I don't know if you guys saw that, but it was crazy, but every time I say COVID-19, the first thing that pops in my head is COVID-19, <laughs> um, yeah, uh, 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 Ever Transit says, you know, it's a horn toad. Yeah, it's a horn toad. It's got a, it's got like little horns. It kind of looks like a, like a little dinosaur. Like I was saying that that dinosaur. I had like a dinosaur on my wall yesterday, on my back by my uh, trash bins. I was, I was just coming in my back gate, and I was uh, walking in there, and I seen this big lizard. If you guys haven't seen it, check our Instagram. Check our Instagram. Living in Arizona's Instagram. This lizard was like on my wall, and I was like, I literally went, whoa. And I was like, okay, that's the thing with growing a garden with the summer coming up is you're going to start getting reptiles. I was like, if I got horn toad or if I got those spiny lizards back there, I'll probably get, you know, who knows, other things. I've, I've also had some black widows, okay? So I've had a little problem with that. No scorpions yet, okay? No rattlers yet. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I have a lush garden back there. I had to like today I was like cutting back all the bottom stuff. So I want to be able to, I don't want anything like living at the ground level. So all my vines, I like cut all the, the lower vines because I don't want things living in the lower levels and creating habitats for like snakes or, uh, certain reptiles. Yeah. Uh, Vince garden pictures are going to, I'm going to post more garden pictures today. I've, 
I actually have an update. It's springtime in Arizona, so you can imagine everything's blooming and blossoming. I just took a bunch of strawberries off, put them in a plastic or a plastic bag, and I'm freezing them. My grandma wants them. So I froze her a bunch of strawberries that I picked yesterday. Uh, my artichokes, I have about one, I have one artichoke plant with like 15 artichokes just coming off of it. I'll post all those videos. I've got a lilikoi, which is passion fruit. I'll probably make another one showing all the things that are blooming right now and coming into fruition. But there was, I counted at least six little lilikois on there, passion fruits. That's pretty good. Uh, Cause I, it was, it was like a surprise. Like I was like, whoa, because last time I checked, I only saw one on there. Now I saw six. So uh, the passion fruits are really growing great. The grapes are growing. I mean, the grapes are getting huge. Uh, I've got the Chardonnay grape. I've got like, a, I think it's a Merlot grape. Uh, I've got uh, all sorts of different grapes. I've got like four grape trees now. Blackberries, blueberries, poppies, flowers, roses are growing like crazy right now. My plumeria is coming in. I mean, my whole yard is just turning into one lush desert botanical garden. And I'm happy about it. The only problem is I got to fix my uh, pond water. I don't know what's going on with the pond. And uh, that's a problem. I, I put a second pump in there, a filter, um, to try and get rid of the algae. It could have a leak in the, um, in the pond. There could be a leak in the pond that's causing it to be murky. Uh, Vince says, am I making wine? I want to make wine, but I have never made wine. I've never fermented wine. I might do it. Uh, I got I to gotta research on how to do that. Chuck Miller says, Kim Jong-un died of Chinese virus. Did he really? Man, that's crazy that uh, out of nowhere, the tyrant of the world uh, who, you know, died. I wonder, I wonder, it just makes you think, like, what happened? How did that happen? Like, he's 36 years old. That's pretty young. Butch says, talk to us about Payson if you have time. Thanks. Well, I've got a video on this channel from Payson. Did you guys see it? Did you see it? If you search on this channel, go to the homepage. I've got two videos from Payson. I did one where I was talking about uh, just talking about Payson, and then I did one where I drove around Payson to show you guys around. It's on this channel. Chuck says it's all rumors right now. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't subscribe to rumors too much because uh, you know how the news is, what they call it, fake news. <laughs> so, I mean, I can't, I, you know, fake news. We're living in an era of fake news. What, if it's not confirmed, hey, you know. Halloween Jack says, and smoke big time. You talking about Kim Jong? Yeah, we'd like to verify if, if I mean, last I heard, uh, when I heard it, it was uh, it was in a vegetative state, but no one's heard of anything. They said that he was out there uh, like walking around and he just grabbed his heart and he keeled over. Like I said, we don't know. But um, it's interesting because, you know, covert operations work in mysterious ways. If you guys know what I mean, I'll leave it at that. Okay. Um, covert operations do some really mysterious stuff. And that dude, he was, you know, launching, he was launching nuclear, uh, or he was launching long range missiles tests over Japan. He was launching, you know, he was a, he was a hot headed, uh, he was a hot headed leader and he had some access to some of the, uh, the most dangerous weapons in, uh, known to humanity, atomic weapons. So, so do you guys want me to show you guys my garage and all the stuff that I have in my garage that I've been prepping for? Uh, not just stuff that's daily use, but stuff that I'd want to have on hand uh, that I'd recommend out here in Arizona. Because, you know, if you're a tactical guy, you know, because um, I've been buying, uh, our, well, I've accumulated some tactical equipment, you know, tactical is military grade. So uh, in the event of a SHTF situation, you know, where things hit the fan, uh, you know, you want to be prepared. And what are some things that you need out here in Arizona to be prepared? Well, are you messing with some solar power? You got solar, you have a backup solar generator. Do you have anything like that? Uh, you know, backup water supplies, not just guns. Everyone's like, oh yeah, I'm ready for uh, if things hit the fan. Uh, why? Well, I got guns. So everyone thinks that because they're armed to the teeth that they're ready for, you know, civil unrest and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, it's, it's other things. You're going to still need to eat and drink water. And I think uh, that's important to keep in mind. Any more on MLB playing all games in Arizona? That I've been tracking, but I haven't heard too much information on that. Eric Gomez says it hit 98 degrees and it didn't even feel bad for some reason. Yeah, it's it's 90. It's it's hot out there right now, but it doesn't feel that bad. Actually, Arizona under 100 degrees is tolerable. It's once it starts pumping 
115, 110, you start really being like, oh, it's hot. It's hot. It's hot out here. It's hotter than heck. Um, it hit 98 degrees and didn't even feel bad for some reason is what Eric Gamma said. Did you guys watch the NFL draft? Arizona Cardinals, if you're a football person, the Cardinals are going to be real uh, – they're looking real hot. It's a good time to be an Arizona Cardinals fan with the – with Kyler Murray at quarterback, we just recruit. We just got another uh, wide receiver. We still got Larry Fitzgerald. We've got a pretty good running back. Uh, you know, well, we lost David Johnson, but we acquired uh, a pretty good running back. Uh, oh my gosh, why am I forgetting his name? Someone help me with his name. We got him from Miami. What's his name? We've gone through so many running backs. You know, we had Chris Johnson on our team. We had Edger and James at one point. I mean, we've gone through so many dang running backs. Uh, I mean, whatever happened to some of these other guys, they're, uh, uh, Ellingsworth, Ellington, uh, you know, we go through so many. Somebody tell me the name of our running back in Arizona. <laughs> okay. Um, Eric Gamez says Arizona made some two great picks and he's a Cowboys fan. Yeah, the, we got a defensive player. So if you're a Cardinals fan, go down to the Big Toaster. That's the name of the Arizona Cardinals Stadium. They call it the Big Toaster. Uh, I'm actually going to probably be getting some Cardinals gear. I'm probably going to get a Cardinals hat. I'm probably going to get a jersey. Um, see you later, Michelle. Kenyon Drake, that's his name. Uh, so Kenyon Drake is our running back. If you're a Cardinals fan, head on down to the – get ready to get some tickets to go down to the Big Toaster, assuming we're not social distancing. That's the name of the Cardinals Stadium. State Farm Stadium used to be called University of Phoenix Stadium. But it's good, it's good to go into the Big Toaster because uh, – it's indoors. It's a real amazing environment. Even going to a Diamondbacks game is pretty good at uh, formerly known as Bank One Ballpark, now called Chase Field. But they want to tear it down. They want to tear down Chase Field. But Bank One Ballpark, when it first opened in like 1996 or, yeah, 1996, it was amazing. I recently went to a Suns game. The Suns have some potential. I'm saying this to all the sports fans. I don't know how many of you guys are sports fans out there. See you later, Robert. Um, yeah, the Big Toaster. You can see why they call it the Big Toaster, though, right? Uh, anyway, yeah, we have DeAndre Hopkins. He's the wide receiver. Uh, so between Kenyon Drake, we're going to be an offensive machine with Kyler Murray, Larry Fitzgerald, Kenyon Drake, uh, DeAndre Hopkins. Uh, we still got, uh, you know, the the other receivers that we drafted. I can't even think right now because my mind is just out there. Who, who's the who's the kid that we just drafted the other year? Oh my gosh, we are going to. Getting that nice dry heat here in Texas. It was 97 yesterday and nice. Normally here in Texas is very humid, which is far worse than Arizona heat. Sean says, hey, Jeff, going back to those areas that are less saturated for dentists, how would the commute from Tempe be to those areas? Where do you want to live? Tempe is centrally located. If you're in Tempe, you're in the heart of the city. There's freeways going in all directions from Tempe. Tempe, you got the 101 going in all directions, I-10. Tempe is the best place to be in Arizona if you want to just be able to access anywhere in Arizona. Te between Tempe, South Scottsdale, Arcadia, Central Phoenix, on the street side, that's, that's, you're good to go out there, man. I wouldn't even question anything about Tempe. If, if, if centrality and convenience is really important, just go to Tempe. Thanks to the 58 people who crushed up the likes. We have 75 people watching. Yes, Eric says, Andy, Isabella, and Christian Kirk. Thank you, man. <laughs> You're right, man. Isabella is I, – I, I like uh, – Kyler Murray connected with Andy Isabella on a long tightrope just pass, and it was a dart, and he hit him. I'm a big football guy. I'm a big NFL guy, in case you guys didn't know. I, I don't really talk about it on here because I don't want to scare off all the non-football uh, people. If I talked about it too much, they'd be like, shut that guy up. But since we're 43 minutes into a um, live feed, I'll, I'll let it be known. I'm a huge Arizona Cardinal fan. I love Kurt Warner. Kurt Warner – uh, brought us to some glory days, him and Larry. I just don't know what jersey I want to get. I don't know what jersey I want to get. Maybe a Kyler Murray jersey. Herbert Walker says, go Redskins. Well, you know, uh, the Redskins, yeah. They, you guys had that one year where RG3 was going to take you somewhere, and then that was about it. Tom A says, Bears fan. If you're down here in Arizona, it's really hard not to start supporting the local team once we get going. Because when the Cardinals get in gear – Going down to those games and hanging out with fellow Cards fans and being, you know, lock, lock, lock step with us. Uh, we're a pretty good fan base. We're pretty loyal, pretty fun. We don't, we don't, we're not like the Raiders fans where we start beating people up. But, uh, you know, we, we like to tailgate. We got beautiful weather out there in November and December outside uh, Big Toaster. 
Uh, the stadium's beautiful. The Cardinals, they'll put points on the board. And with Kyler Murray, I mean, he's like the next – kind of reminds you a little bit of Russell Wilson, right? So, I mean, you know what Russell Wilson's done. But we're not even going to compare him to Russell Wilson because Seahawks are our enemies. We call them chicken hawks. Uh, Eric Gamma says, Cardinals won on that Hopkins and David Johnson trade for sure. Yeah, I mean, David Johnson was a beast, but I don't know what's going on with him. Maybe him and uh, Kingsbury didn't get along. I don't know. Uh Vince says Fitz does a lot off the field. Yeah, Larry Fitzgerald, if you're just moving to Arizona, he's like our uh he's like the the main uh sports guy in Arizona. He's like the 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 hero because like he said, on and off the field, Larry Fitzgerald does a lot for the community. He's uh really well spoken, he's a positive role model. Uh when he's on the field, you never see him argue, you never see him lose his temper, he doesn't really showboat, he'll catch the ball, score a touchdown. He'll, he'll throw his arms up, say, good job, go team, go. But then he's back on the sideline, ready to get back to work, telling his team to get back out there. He's a leader. He's a great veteran. And in Arizona, he's well-respected. So whether you like football or not, Larry Fitzgerald is the man out here in Arizona. Um, Vince says, I saw him at the WM P oh, Waste Management PGA event. Great event. Yeah, another thing, if you're really into um, uh, sports, we do get the biggest golf tournament in terms of population. So – 500,000 people turn out to the Waste Management um, Phoenix Open. Uh, so, you know, even if you don't like golf, people who don't like golf, they go out to the Waste Management PGA Open over uh, in January, uh, the the Phoenix Open, 500,000 people. It's huge. I mean, they turned the, they turned the golf event into a big event. That was, you know, it, it really kicked off when Tiger Woods was, uh, when Tiger Woods came to town, he's got a hole in one on hole number 16. And, uh, ever, you know, it was already raising in, in popularity, but uh, Tiger really put us on the map uh, when he got that hole-in-one because young Tiger, he was up and coming, and he got that hole-in-one, and the crowd just went crazy on hole 16. But they call it the bird's nest. People just walk around there. They get a beer, and they just chill out. I mean, it's really nice out there in uh, the Phoenix Open. So if you get a chance, uh, go to the Phoenix Open. Go to, go to a football game at uh, the Big Toaster. Go go to the uh, Diamondbacks games. Catch a catch an even game in the summertime. They'll have the roof open or closed, probably closed. And you know who knows? Maybe the Diamondbacks might win another World Series. The Suns, uh, it's the owner. The Suns, the Suns owner is just atrocious. <laughs> Robert Sarver, sorry, he just he he can't he can, he doesn't know how to win. Um, what city is the waste management event? It's in North Scottsdale. It's at the Scottsdale Princess. TPC at Scottsdale is what it's called. TPC at Scottsdale. Uh, Vince says Devin Booker. Devin Booker. We've got. Uh, I mean, I can't even remember them all. But we got some. We got some talent on there. Um, there's that uh, that that one dude from Arizona, University of Arizona. The one thing that really got me sideways was um, the uh, University of Arizona had a great freshman class, the Wildcats, because, you know, University of Arizona Wildcats are pretty good. We go back with Mike Bibby. We got uh, Gilbert Arenas. You know, we've won, we've won some games in Arizona uh, dating back for a while, right? But uh, even Luke Walton went there. Luke Walton's not a good coach in the NBA at all, though. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, but we had a really good freshman class. We had, uh, what's his name, uh, Nico Mannion. We had this other kid, David Green from Australia, and all three of them decided to go into the NBA draft. I don't know why they chose to do that. They must have been really disheartened with the way the season uh, ended in college basketball and said, well, forget this. I'm going for the big money. But they didn't even give themselves a chance to raise their draft stock. So uh, University of Arizona, I was I was thinking next year, University of Arizona was going to win the, the Final Four, win the national championship. But they left. Three of the best players, three of our best freshmen. Uh, Sun Devils, they still got – maybe the Sun Devils will do it. I don't know. Yeah, DeAndre Ayton. You, see, you guys know what's up. <laughs> I just keep forgetting all these names right now, man. But I know them. Uh, Mary Smith, swamp cooler or refrigerant air? So you want what is called central air cooling. Central cooling. Not swamp cooler. <laughs> I don't know what refrigerant air is. Is that central air? So your central, the reason you want central air, you could do fans. Um, you know, I got a fan up here. I got a uh, air, I got, you know, fans throughout my house. I got this cool fan I got on Amazon called a Bornado. That sucker pumps like just a stream of fast air. It's called a Bornado. It's a real good fan. 
Um, yeah, Swamp Cooler is just uh, the Swamp Cooler. Oh man, I I grew up with a Swamp Cooler back in the nineties, uh, and you know you got to like keep the hose plugged into it. <laughs> no, Swamp Cooler. I don't know. I haven't tried a Swamp Cooler, but I know the central cooling works for damn sure out here. Freon versus pushing air over water. Yeah. Well, I'm assuming you're talking about the home, but obviously Freon, the first thing that comes to mind is in your automobile. If you don't have air conditioner in your automobile in Arizona, uh, yeah, get ready to roll down them windows, but it's going to be like a hot blast of really hot air just blowing onto you. It's going to be like, I mean, it's hot, man. <laughs> you got to have an air conditioner. I used to have a car that didn't have air conditioner in the summertime. That's how I know. I had two cars when I was in high school. First car was a Cadillac, 1989 Cadillac Brome. Uh, the, the the Freon went out, the AC unit went out, and uh, so did the reverse on the transmission. But 89, you know, Cadillac, it was a luxury vehicle, but no AC. And, uh, you know, it was only good when you're driving. You're stopped at a stoplight. You're like, whoo, damn, hurry up. <laughs> And then I had a 1991 Honda Civic. You know, this was in the year 19. This was in the year 1999, 2000, 2001. Yeah, Freon is in the AC, but yeah, I mean, Freon in what AC? Car or... Um, Guile says, I love your content. Thanks for sharing. What cities would you recommend to live and that has a good school district and not too far from Phoenix? I don't want to be in the heart of Phoenix either. Gilbert, there you go. Gilbert or Scottsdale, Chandler, Gilbert, Scottsdale, Southeast Phoenix is where it's at. Uh, actually, if you look at, you, you could probably get North Phoenix, like Pinnacle's a good school. If you go to, um, like, if you want to go to Pinnacle, Pinnacle is the ones who won the state championship last year uh, or the year before. Chandler usually wins it, Mesa Mountain View, so Mesa, Scottsdale, basically the east side, street side is, they, they dominate everything. Uh, in terms of like academia and also um, state championships and all that. I mean, it's in Tucson, you get like Sabino Canyon every once in a while, but um, pen or sword, which is greater. If you don't have an AC in Arizona, you're going to be miserable. Yeah. It, from about May. I mean, here it is April. I just turned on my AC this week. First time all year. Uh, Chuck Miller, swamp coolers can only cool 29 degrees below ambient air temp. But if it's 95, it can get down to 66 degrees in low humidity. Okay. <laughs> My mind is already like kind of. I'm. Not. Um, anyways, guys, thanks for watching. And I'll see you guys on the next one. And like I said, uh, check the links in the uh, description below if you guys want to see what kind of uh, stuff that I am using to stay cool. And the stuff that I've used around Arizona. Thanks to the 65 people who crushed up the likes and we'll see y'all in the next one.